miss loss or win. Four seconds to go, do or die for Mount Union in the hopes of saving this final season. As Plunk starts scrambling to the right, ball goes deep. It is up in the air, short, and will be tipped. But caught! Wayne Ruby Jr. touchdown! Wayne Ruby Jr. touchdown! Wayne Ruby Jr. touchdown! No way! Wayne Ruby Jr. touchdown! Mount Union wins the game! Shout out to Bob Boyer and Gabe Baker on the call for a legendary Mount Union miracle victory last week as the Raiders clinched yet another berth into postseason play. Welcome to our playoff preview show here on 91.1 WRMU. I'm your host, Jacob Attar, and we will take a look at all the first round matchups for this week's opening round. 32 teams make up the field for this year's postseason play with 27 automatic qualifiers and five at-large bids with 12 undefeated squads and some newcomers also joining in on the action. Let's take a look at all the matchups for this week's first round. First, taking a look at the top right section of the NCAA playoff bracket, it'll be the top seeded North Central Cardinals playing host to the Lake Forest Foresters. Lake Forest comes in with a 9-1 regular season record as the champions of the Midwest Conference in their third appearance in NCAA postseason play. For North Central, they finished the regular season at 10-0 as the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin champions their 14th appearance in the NCAA playoffs and they were the 2019 national champions and national runners-up from a year ago after defeating the Purple Raiders in the national semifinals. The winner of that matchup will face the winner of the DePaul Tigers at the Carnegie Mellon Tartans. DePaul finished the regular season at 9-1 as the North Coast Athletic Conference champions, making their fourth appearance in postseason play. Meanwhile, Carnegie Mellon completed a 10-0 regular season record as the President's Athletic Conference champions their eighth appearance in postseason play. Looking at the bottom part of this region, it'll be the Springfield Pride at the Endicott Goals. Springfield finished the regular season at eight and two as the New England Women's and Men's Athletic Conference champions, making their eighth appearance in postseason play. And meanwhile, for Endicott, they completed their first undefeated regular season record in school history at 10 and 0. They were the Commonwealth Coast Conference champions, making their third appearance in postseason play. The winner of that matchup will face the winner of the Massachusetts Dartmouth Corsairs at the Ithaca Bombers. Massachusetts Dartmouth finished 9-1 in the regular season as the Massachusetts State Collegiate Athletic Conference champions, making their second appearance in postseason play in their first since 2002, while the Ithaca Bombers finished 10-0 in the regular season as the Liberty League champions, making their 20th appearance in postseason play as the three-time national champions. Now taking a look at the bottom right section of the tournament bracket, It'll be the top-seeded Trinity Tigers playing host to the Hardin-Simmons Cowboys. Hardin-Simmons finished the regular season at 9-1, coming out of the American Southwest Conference with an at-large bid. It's their 11th appearance in postseason play. Meanwhile, for Trinity, they finished the regular season at 10-0 as the Southern Athletic Association Conference champions, and it's their 14th appearance in postseason history. The winner of that matchup will face the winner of the Huntingdon Hawks, at the Mary Harden Baylor Crusaders. Huntingdon finished 9-1 in the regular season as the USA South Conference champions. It's their seventh appearance in postseason play. And meanwhile, for Mary Harden Baylor, they finished the regular season at 9-1 as the American Southwest Conference champions for the 18th time in school history. It's their 20th appearance in the NCAA postseason. They're the two-time national champions and come into this year's postseason play as the defending national champions. At the bottom part of this region, it'll be the Bethel Royals at the Wheaton Thunder. Bethel finished 8-2 in the regular season as they received an at-large bid from the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. It's their eighth appearance in postseason play. And meanwhile, for Wheaton, they finished the regular season as well at 8-2. They also received an at-large bid coming out of the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin. It's their 13th appearance in the NCAA playoffs as the team is 12-0 in the first round in their school's history. The winner of that matchup will face the winner of the Pomona Pitzer Sage Hens at the Linfield Wildcats. Pomona Pitzer finished 8-2 in the regular season, coming out of the Southern California Intercollegiate Athletic Conference as the champions of that conference. It's their first ever appearance in postseason play. Meanwhile, for Linfield, they finished with a 9-0 regular season record as the Northwest Conference champions. It's their 17th appearance in postseason play as they were the national champions in 2004. Now taking a look at the top left section of the NCAA tournament bracket, it'll be the St. John's Johnnies, the top seed, playing host to the Northwestern Eagles. Northwestern finished 6-4 in the regular season as the Upper Midwest 
Athletic Conference champions. It's their second appearance in postseason play. Meanwhile, for St. John's, they finished 9 and 1 in the regular season as the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference champions. It's their 32nd appearance in NCAA postseason play as they are two time Stag Bowl champions. The winner of that matchup will face the winner of the Wisconsin Lacrosse Eagles at the Wartburg Knights. Wisconsin Lacrosse finished the regular season at 9 and 1, receiving an at large bid from the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletics Conference. It's their 13th appearance in postseason play as they are two time national champions. Meanwhile, for Wartburg, they finished the regular season at 10-0 as the American Rivers Conference champions. It's their 15th appearance in postseason play as they have pitched five shutouts on the season. At the bottom part of this region, it will be the Mount St. Joseph Lions at the Alma College Scots. Mount St. Joseph finished 10-0 in the regular season, coming out of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, and they are receiving their first postseason appearance since 2009. Meanwhile, for Alma, they completed their first undefeated regular season at 10-0 as the champions of the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletic Association. It's their fourth appearance in postseason play and their first since 2004. The winner of that matchup will face the winner of the Aurora Spartans at the Wisconsin Whitewater Warhawks. Aurora finished 9-1 in the regular season as the Northern Athletics Collegiate Conference champions. It's their seventh appearance in tournament play. And meanwhile, for the Warhawks, they finished 8-2 in the regular season as the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference champions. It's their 17th appearance in the NCAA postseason as they are five-time national champions. And lastly, taking a look at the bottom left section here of the playoff bracket, it'll be your top seeded Mount Union Purple Raiders playing host to the Salisbury Seagulls. Salisbury finished the regular season with a 9-1 record as the New Jersey Athletic Conference champions. They will be making their 13th NCAA playoff appearance. And for your Purple Raiders, they completed their 31st undefeated regular season at 10-0 as the Ohio Athletic Conference champions. They will be making their record 33rd playoff appearance as they are 13-time national champions. The winner of that matchup will face the winner of the Utica Pioneers at the Susquehanna Riverhawks. Utica finished 9-1 in regular season play, receiving an at-large bid from the Empire 8 Conference. It's their first playoff appearance in school history. And meanwhile, for the Riverhawks, Susquehanna finished 10-0 in the regular season, winning their first Centennial Conference Championship in school history. And it's their first playoff appearance as well in postseason play. In the bottom part of this bracket, it'll be the Cortland Red Dragons at the Randolph-Macon Yellow Jackets. Cortland finished the regular season 9-1 as the Empire 8 Conference champions, making their 11th NCAA playoff appearance. And meanwhile, for Randolph-Macon, they finished the regular season at 10-0 as the Old Dominion Athletic Conference champions. It's their fifth NCAA playoff appearance and their first time hosting a game since 1984. The winner of that matchup will face the winner of the Gallaudet Bison at the Delaware Valley Aggies. Gallaudet finished 7-2 in the regular season as the Eastern Collegiate Football Conference champions, making their second appearance in the postseason in school history. And for Delaware Valley, they completed a 10-0 regular season as the Middle Atlantic Conference champions. They are making their 11th playoff appearance in school history in their fifth straight. So that'll do it for all 16 first round matchups here in Division III football this week. Host sites will be announced all throughout postseason play with each team hoping to make it to the Stag Bowl, which will be played Friday, December 16th at the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Make sure to tune in all postseason long to follow along with your Purple Raiders and all the action taking place across the country. We'll send it back to Karis Stadium here momentarily as postseason play gets set to get underway.